So recently I got to one of those points where you run out of things to watch on YouTube. Where you scroll and scroll through your front page, but all the recommendations are boring and uninteresting and even a major upload by your favorite content creator will only sedate your boredom for a few minutes before it's back to the scroll fest. So what do you do when all you see are crappy TV reviews and vloggers talking about nothing for 10 minutes and 3 seconds at a time? You masturbate. You open up Netflix, of course. I mean, they're always adding stuff and even though you've rewatched The Office and How I Met Your Mother at least four times each, it'll do in a pinch. Someone had told me the new series Lost in Space had a good first episode, so I thought, screw it, I'll give it a shot. And hey, it wasn't too bad. A bit clunky, and with a decent amount of forced dialogue. Okay. You do what you have to do. But it was good. And then a line was said that reminded me of something. When I was a kid, my mom told me about this show she used to watch. She said how there was this robot, and he would say this thing, and for some reason, I remember this really vividly. Maybe she said it once, maybe she brought it up all the time. But once I heard this line, I realized what I was watching. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, no Will Robinson. Danger, Will Robinson. Holy crap, I'm watching a reboot. All right, so turns out this was a cheesy show from the 60s that supposedly holds the title of having one of the worst hours of television ever made under its belt as its second to last episode. It involves a sentient carrot, like a, like a guy in a bad carrot costume, chasing down the antagonist, Dr. Smith, more of a cowardly, bumbling buffoon type, really. And the carrot tries to do what appears to be choke him out for uh, murdering some flowers. You murdered them. You shouldn't have done that. Plot gets convoluted from there, and while I see why people have long called it the worst hour of television ever made, when looked at through the lens of the time, I don't think it's really all that awful. But all of us were aware of the fact that it was just awful. It was beyond ridiculous. But that aside, the reboot isn't at all terrible. It feels like a good amount of shows and movies already out there, but it was a fun ride with amazing visuals that look more like they belong in a blockbuster than a Netflix series. And the scenery had me wondering from the start where they must have filmed. Probably, uh, probably in front of a green screen now that I think about it. The show even managed to create a character who I thoroughly hated. Like, in a Joffrey way, not in a Tierno from Pokemon X and Y kind of way. And that, in my eyes, is a sign of really good writing and great acting in Dr. Smith. I was hooked on the show, which was why when I noticed this one glaring problem that it was so jarring to me that I felt I had to make this video. And this problem might even put the whole sentient carrot thing to shame. So follow me here. The Robinson family, a family who succeeded in getting the opportunity to move to a new planet once it was discovered that Earth was going to be doomed by a celestial object, has crash landed on a habitable planet with a breathable atmosphere exactly like that of Earth, despite the composition of our atmosphere constantly evolving and not being static, making the odds of this astronomically high. So, they crash land after their ship was attacked by an alien invader. Spoilers, it was the robot, but that's totally unimportant for what I'm talking about here. Oh, by the way, uh, spoilers. You can just put that anywhere you want in the video. So, the mother of the family is an astrophysicist, and after a few days on the planet, she starts noticing that the orbit of the planet seems to be rapidly accelerating for some reason. She straps herself into a hot air balloon that totally makes sense for them to have brought along on an interstellar voyage where space was so limited that Oreos and whiskey are said to be seen as major wastes of precious cargo room, along with all the helium required to fill it. Plus, more helium later on that's in all their space Range Rovers, it's, it's, it's complicated. But okay, whatever. So she floats on up willy-nilly to 350,045 feet in the sky. Again, not possible since the atmosphere here would be so thin that the helium gas wouldn't flow any higher. This on Earth would be the thermosphere, the hottest part of the atmosphere, which is over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. But the molecules are so far apart that he can't be conducted adequately by the charged ions in the air. And the highest an unmanned helium or hydrogen balloon has ever gone, by the way, is 173,000 feet, which is half of this height. Wait, is this meters or feet? Ah, oh, metric stinks! But, whatever. 
Not the major problem. It's another planet, and this might be a different atmosphere even though it's all otherwise the same. No, these aren't even close to the biggest problem. So, she gets up there, and wouldn't you know it, finds out, oh no, the sun has a binary orbit with a black hole, and once the planet they're on reaches a certain part of the orbit near the black hole, all life on the planet will be killed off. What the fuck? You what? Hell no! 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 I am not an astrophysicist at all, but I have watched enough Neil deGrasse Tyson videos to know that this is colossal bullshit. So, check this out. There are binary orbits. They're actually relatively common. It's when two stars orbit each other, but it could be done with a black hole too, so long as it's not so big that the gravity around it rips all other celestial bodies around it to pieces. Black holes are nothing more than mass condensed past a point called the Schwarzschild radius, where the object collapses under its own gravity in a process called gravitational collapse. Real original, guys. A black hole has a huge amount of gravity, and so long as you don't cross what's called the event horizon, which is the radius around the black hole from which nothing, not even electromagnetic radiation or light can escape, it'll act just like any other celestial body of like mass. For example, if you switched out the sun for a black hole of equal mass, the orbit of all the planets would stay the same, there would just be no more life, or warmth, or seasons, or habitable zone, or puppies left. But, uh, but on a celestial scale everything would stay the same. There are also binary systems wherein a star and a black hole orbit each other. Actually, it's one of the main ways we can indirectly observe and study black holes. See, since no light can escape them, that means no light reflects off them, which means we can't see them. Any picture you've ever seen of a black hole are artist renderings because it's literally impossible to see one. The way we know that they're there, and one of the best ways we have of seeing them interact, is to find star systems where it seems like there might be a black hole sharing a binary orbit. So, any planet that comes to be in this binary black hole star system would orbit either the star, the black hole, or their shared center of mass. It could do this in an elliptical around one of the three if it's going to have a stable orbit, meaning it doesn't get kicked out of the system and just become a rogue planet floating around in space with no rhyme or reason. So the planet in Lost in Space has to either be orbiting just the star, kind of like how Jupiter's moons orbit it and not the sun, or making a giant orbit around the common center of mass of the black hole and the star. It can't be orbiting just the black hole or else the scientist lady would have known. Oh, also they'd all be dead from the whole no habitable zone seasons, atmosphere, puppies, and stuff. A lot of people think a black hole is like a giant vacuum cleaner or a literal galactus just sucking in everything that comes near it. False. Like I said before, black holes are just massive objects that are super condensed and act like any other massive object. You don't go near one and just get pulled in unless you cross the event horizon. And according to the explanation given by Dr. Robinson deGrasse Tyson over here, this planet is still going to exist when it crosses this point that's going to kill all life on it. So it isn't going to cross the event horizon or else the planet would be sucked into the black hole and ripped apart atom by atom. No, she said it would become completely uninhabitable. This is total bullshit. First off, this planet has a crazy rich biosphere with huge reptile analogous apex predators, flying insects, and crazy amounts of plant life. Enough that the atmosphere is breathable by humans. That sort of stuff takes hundreds of millions and even billions of years to evolve. So if this planet has been here for billions of years, it has to have a stable orbit. Meaning it has to have passed through whatever point this stupid fake doctor is talking about literally hundreds of millions of times at least. And life didn't just die off all those times, did it? In the show, they even have a character say that the planet they're on has a cycle of death and rebirth over and over. The life cycle on this planet is quite remarkable. Birth, death, repeat. That would mean life ends and has to start from scratch, or at least single-celled life, all the fucking time. And yet, in the only example of life forming in the entire universe that we know of, it only ever started once, and there hasn't been any other abiogenesis event, or the becoming of life from non-life, since about 4.2 billion years ago. Side note. You ever think about how crazy it is that all organisms alive today are connected through an unbroken chain to the very first form of life on Earth? Fucking crazy, man. There's no way that such complex and advanced life has time to arise in this nonsense universe where black holes for some reason are giant death lasers. At one point, a character also stated that it's gonna get too hot soon for the planet to be inhabitable. 
Again, we aren't saying this is just for the humans who coincidentally can survive on the planet due to its otherwise Earth-like or Earth-exact features, but as said by the woman herself, all life will be unable to survive. So now we're saying the black hole isn't going to suck them in, but that this death laser is going to hit them as they approach the part of their regular enough orbit to develop complex biodiversity billions of years in the making. But black holes do emit radiation, don't they? Yeah, it's called Hawking radiation. But look, as the late great Stephen Hawking discovered when doing work on singularities, the quantum nature of our universe is what creates this. It's going to get a little complicated, but basically, little subatomic particles are literally always popping in and out of existence everywhere in otherwise empty space. And they show up in pairs of alternatively charged particles that annihilate once they make contact with each other. However, if right on the border of the event horizon, one of these pairs pulls a punxsutawney fill and pops its head out from quantum nothingness, one particle will be pulled into the singularity, and the other will escape. Now, this sounds dangerous, right? Enacted electrons shooting away from a black hole, brand new energy flying at the speed of light, well, that must be like sunbeams, which, if you're in their path, can burn you and damage DNA from 93 million miles away, even with the protection of our atmosphere and magnetic fields. Nope. This Hawking radiation is pretty low on the danger scale, and it would be traveling as radio waves, so unless the life on this planet is weak against a little space jazz, there shouldn't be much harm. No, the only way you're going to heat something around you with a black hole is if that body crosses the event horizon and starts getting ripped apart into what's known as an accretion disk, since, you know... The particles are being ripped to pieces and orbit into the singularity, starting to look like a planetary donut, and the energy of their bonds is released as heat energy. You know, everybody knows that. But just to remind you, this isn't the case for sure, since we established the planet has a stable orbit and has apparently gone through this many times before. So it won't be getting ripped apart or significantly heated up. Hell, the show talks about Hawking radiation like it's going to be the main thing destroying them. Warning. Hawking radiation detected. I can't stand this fake science use smart sounding words phenomenon in movies and on TV to convince the viewer the characters are sciency, since they probably don't know their implications, but just that they've heard the word before in a documentary or something. So, overall, clearly this is just bad writing and either a lack of or total disregard towards any sort of research. But we've seen planets orbit black holes in fiction before, and not just in some little niche sci fi stories. It happened in Interstellar with Matthew McConaughey, one of the most famous leading men of our time who was voted sexiest man alive in 2005. Come on, my mom saw this movie. If you're writing science fiction involving getting stranded in interstellar space in this day and age, this should at least be on the required reading list. Neil Tyson himself said it's one of, if not the most scientifically accurate science fiction movies of all time, so come on, at least get your black hole binary systems right if you're gonna put them in your reboot of our parents' beloved campy sci-fi truth space robot show- oh, why?! And the fucking balloon! So, um, sorry, I got a little carried away there. But anyway, I actually recorded this almost a month ago, and uh, it just took a little longer to get out than I hoped for. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. So if you can, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you like what we made and uh, want to see similar content. Uh, maybe leave a recommendation for what you might want to see in another video. And uh, yeah, we should have another video out uh, eventually. Bye!